This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it seems like we do a lot of conference coverage because there are a lot of great conferences out there. Um, some seem to be for everyone. They're kind of general interest conferences. Others are a bit more specific, have specific audiences, and do a little deeper dive into things. This time, we're going to talk to Ray Robertson um, about the Command-D Masters of Automation conference that's being held in October this year. Um, this is sort of the second annual, but not exactly, and we'll talk about why. Ray, welcome back. It's great to see you. Great to see you again, Chuck. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thank you for being here. Um, last year's um, Command-D Automation Conference was, I, from what I heard, a huge success. I know every all the speakers that I talked to had a great time. They said they, they all, I think, came away learning something, even though they were supposed to be the experts. Um, mm. So that, that says a lot about it. Um, this year's conference, though, is going to be uh, quite a bit different, I think, um, than last year's. That's right. Um, and we do all learn from each other whenever we come together at these conferences. So that's what's great about them for everybody involved. Uh, last year, I led a single-day scripting boot camp on AppleScript, and that preceded the Command-D conference in Silicon Valley. And then the second day was a host of various speakers uh, including Sal Sagoyan, on uh, many automation topics from Automator to AppleScript to um, various automation technologies. And a great time was had there, and much was learned. So I, I really enjoyed that conference. Now this year, we are focusing three days in-depth on AppleScript itself. Uh, so we're calling it the Down Home Scripting Boot Camp to focus on what is a widely used automation technology of AppleScript. And uh, we're really looking forward to giving people more than just a single day's look at the language and all the possibilities for automating things on your Mac. I, I, I love the down-home scripting boot camp. That, just, that sounds so approachable and so friendly that nobody can possibly be intimidated by that. Right, exactly. And, and I, I love to teach people from that standpoint, uh, beginners or even people who are intermediate scripters, and show them how easy it is to work with AppScript. Now, the down-home part is because we're actually in my town of Cartersville, Georgia. Um, just to quickly explain, last year I went to Silicon Valley and taught at this. And this year we decided that Sal would come here. Um, to Cartersville, and we would have a location that's really just a little bit beyond the metro Atlanta area, but in the foothills of the North Georgia mountains, where people could get in a retreat-like setting, and where I will also mention that things are a little bit more affordable here than in the Silicon Valley area. I can't imagine, so, Ray. <laughs> now, I do have exclusive for your show, if you want it, a two-minute introduction to why we're hosting this in Cartersville. Please. Okay, and I'm using some very old technology here, printouts. Let's see how these show up for your video viewers, but I will describe these. Um, just a mile from our conference hotel, oh. we have some great hiking trails up a mountain. You can overlook the sunset in downtown Cartersville or the sunrise over Lake Alatoona. Tremendous hiking trails great rock formations, which I love. And my wife and I like going down an 18th century mining rail bed to this um, surviving furnace from the 1840s, the Cooper's Furnace. So it's a fascinating way to get some exercise and see the area and get a break if you want from the class itself. Quickly moving along, for a smaller area, you may not realize that we have a world-class science museum, museum, Smithsonian affiliated TELUS museum with its own planetarium and observatory, a great national and regional attraction. And we also have at TELUS 
a model solar home, and of course, a T-Rex and other fossils. So it's a great family gathering if you wish to bring your family along. Now this might really surprise you, but we have the world's largest permanent exhibition space for Western art. That's right, Chuck. Western Art in Cartersville, Georgia at the Booth Western Art Museum. You can see everything from um, people who have worked with Ansel Adams, and we've had Ansel Adams exhibits here as well, to one of my favorites, the Native American art, such as this healer woman. So I wanted to show you a quick preview of that. And believe it or not, people come from all over to see Old Car City which is a great collection of nature trails through all these wonderful old cars, which photographers come from all over the nation and the world to view this area. And I kid you not, within Old Car City indoors is the world's largest styrofoam cup collection. I'm not making this up. But I just wanted to show you a few quirky things. We have the historic downtown area with the world's first outdoor Coca-Cola wall sign, complete with restored typo and other attractions. And jumping to the more modern area era, we have the city of Cartersville was actually destroyed in the movie Guardians of Galaxy 2. So that's actually our historic downtown area being destroyed in that movie. And then one final thing I wanted to show you the under the bridge area, where we have some uh, old museums, including this one, which is the Museum of the Hacker. Uh, we have the large carpet industry here, which was actually hacked into by an infamous hacker, creating obscenities on carpet tiles. And because of that, a large carpet magnet created a museum about hackers, and that includes the digital wall of shame. And I took one photo from the digital wall of shame, and here it is. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. <laughs> I didn't mean to do this so early in the show, but I wanted to show you that there are a lot of um, unique sites here. I haven't covered even half of them, but I also wanted to say hi from Allison Sheridan and that she got you back through me. Yeah, that not exactly a surprise as to where that came <laughs> from. Okay, Allison, we'll we'll we'll. We'll talk about this later. And uh, feel free to, to uh, delete that hometown portion, uh, Chuck, but I just wanted to give people a heads up that there are some unique sites to see here. Well, no, I think it's I think it's fascinating. And I have to ask now, as part of the – I mean, obviously, the conference is a conference, but as part of the conference, are there any organized junkets out into any of these attractions, or is that going to be strictly informal? Strictly informal at this point. In fact, the conference keeps people busy all day. We pretty much start with breakfast at 8 a.m. And we provide all three meals at the conference. And then the first two nights, there's a late night session as well. Um, Sal will be covering uh, scripting iWork as well as series shortcuts. And he also will be giving us a look at the wonderful work that he is doing with the Omni applications. Great. But if you come early and stay a little late, Feel free to ask me about the local attractions. Oh, that I, some of that looks just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I, I know Georgia, and Georgia is, has some beautiful countryside and beautiful things. And I, I was not familiar with any of those. Definitely wasn't familiar with the fact that you were destroyed in Guardians of the Galaxy. So <laughs> that that's a very cool little tidbit. Yes, very very cool. And I guess it compares to me to Apple Script because Apple Apple Script itself is. Some people would consider it a lesser known language in some ways, but it's surprising and extremely powerful. And in some ways where we're the where we're hosting the conference this year reflects that same way of, of what you can find here. So Ray, I just like I did last year, I have to ask, who is this conference for? And and what I mean by that is um, do I need do I need to have a working knowledge of Apple Script, or can I come in just flat cold, not knowing anything, and still get a lot out of it? Yes, you can come in flat cold. It is geared towards beginners, and that's really my specialty is introducing people to the language. And because I don't consider myself um, 
an extremely bright intellectual guy. I have a creative background, and my degree is actually in, believe it or not, political science, um, not in programming. I came to AppleScript learning it pretty much on my own, so I can teach other people how to learn it that way as well. However, at all of these conferences that we've done, including the ones that I started doing in 2001, we always get some intermediate scripters who come back to learn the latest things or to gather together with other scripters. And occasionally we will get somebody who has been working with the language for 10 years. So we try to always include information friendly for the beginner, but throw in a lot of expert tips and tidbits that we've learned over the years to help those who have been working with AppleScript for a while. Okay, this may not be a completely fair question, but I'll try it anyway, and we'll see see where it takes us. I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, that kind of thing is not for me because I don't do anything that can be automated. And, or, you know, the obvious thing of, you know, well, I'm not a programmer. And AppleScript, while it can be considered maybe programming, my experience has been that it's not exactly programming. It's a lot more approachable than, than I think programming. But how do you respond to both of those things? Well, approachable is the word. I'm not a programmer. I did not have a programming background. And I was working in the print in industry, uh, producing large publications and finding that on the Mac, even as sophisticated as the Mac could be, I was repeating the same steps over and over again every day. So I was looking for a way to stop all that repetition because, you know, aren't computers supposed to help us eliminate those tedious tasks? AppleScript delivered for me in that area. And because I was a busy professional and I could not work on programming 24 hours a day or even one day a week, the approachable English-like syntax of AppleScript meant that I could do something, step away from it, meet deadlines for a week or two, come back to it, and still understand the code that I wrote because of that English-like syntax. So I was able to stay in both worlds. And to me, that's really the advantage of AppleScript. If you're a person working with an application, if you know that application or that program itself, let's say what I work with a great deal like InDesign, Adobe InDesign, if you know that application, you're halfway to learning AppleScript itself because you've got the most important skill of knowing what the application can do. And you also understand what's called the object model of the application. You know that a document has pages and that pages might have a text frame or a picture frame and that a picture frame might have a scaling property. If you know that, you understand the object model of the application, and you can look for those equivalents in what's called the AppleScript Dictionary. Now, I have met brilliant programmers who have worked in scripting applications, and one of their biggest obstacles is they don't understand what the application itself does. So they are looking for what can be automated, and users can help them out. But if you're a user yourself, you know what your what in your workflow needs to be automated, so the, then you can begin to do it. And okay, so let's let's go with the InDesign example for just a minute. All right. Okay. So if I if I have if if I am an InDesign user and I know how to use the program, what kind of things would I automate using the examples you just cited? as opposed to just building a template once and having it there and then opening up the template and, and, and working with it? Well, you would automate the uh, population of a template with text. And because AppleScript can work with databases, it can work with Excel, it can read delimited text from any source, you would use AppleScript to read in that text, throw it into various InDesign frames, and then style it. You would do the same with pictures, since AppleScript can work with a finder and it can work with some image databases and it can grab and throw in that picture and automatically scale it to fit. It may not be able to completely automate your publication, 
but it can get you well on the way removing the most tedious tasks so that then you can do your design work or your layout work to complete the publication. And then, of course, AppleScript can help beyond there with saving it as a PDF, uploading it to FTP, sending it to a client through email. All of that can be automated as part of a workflow. So I've seen cases in my work working with corporations where what might have been a six-week workflow can be reduced to a couple of days. But if you're working in a program and you just need help with small tasks that you repeat every day, you can write what I call little helper scripts to help you along with the same thing that you're doing day after day and take away the time that you're using up to repeat those same actions. Okay. I especially like the, the example of the scaling of the image. I think that's something we can all probably relate to. In, in one way or another, um, because that, that's something that I hear from a lot of people when we talk about automation. I get emails back and say, well, you know, I, I don't know what I would automate. And to your point, maybe they just aren't using the right programs or, or thinking about it properly. Because once you see some examples, then it's like, yeah, that would, that would be nice if I could just automatically do that or do it once here and then have it go a half dozen different directions. So, Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite saving saying is that really AppleScript is primarily limited by your imagination. Uh, once you can think of a way to do it, uh, believe that it's possible, and usually with a highly scriptable program, you'll find that it is possible. Um, for in the early days of InDesign, you used to have to place a photo in a frame, and your only choice was to constrain it to fit, and that would lose scale. It might be a different vertical and horizontal scale. So I wrote a script that would scale it down, filling the box, but maintaining proportions. And as would happen, after three or four years, I convinced the InDesign team, well, others I'm sure chimed in, to make that into a feature. So it became a feature of the program itself. So you can stay ahead of what the engineering team is able to do and customize it to what you need at that time. And that's one of the big things I think about automation is the customization for you. You can go out all over the web and find all kind of sample Apple scripts or sample scripts of a lot of different kinds. And that's great maybe to learn about it. And if you happen to stumble on the thing that will do just exactly what you need, that's great. But so often it's just like, well, it's close, but it never quite gets there. So I'm not going to bother with it. Yes, and uh, I, I like to use the analogy of, of what does it take to cross a street? What should you do before you cross a street? And if you're a programmer, you have to think about, okay, you look left, right, and then left again, you can cross the street. But what if there's a crosswalk? Okay, then you have to observe the, the crosswalk sign. Or what if there, it says to walk, but there's an ambulance coming? And all of, th all of those things built, get built into what programmers would call conditionals of anticipating every single circumstance that could happen to anyone, anywhere. And so the basic rule is if you can write a 10-page description of how to cross the street, you can be a programmer. Now, in AppleScript, <laughs> in AppleScript, when you're working on your own project, you own the street. You know the street. You know the conditions. You know that you don't have to check for all of those circumstances that maybe hundreds of thousands of users might encounter. So you don't have to build in all of those conditionals. You just tell it, in this case, I need to look left, right, and left again, and then I can cross. And that makes a huge difference in the amount of effort that goes into programming a solution because you know your own area. You know your own street so you can develop a streamlined system just for your own use or for your company's use. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of world-class software. This time, I want to tell you about Text Expander, my most used utility. It's especially appropriate to talk about it now, since it can be your very first step into automating your activities on your Mac. There are plenty of things that you type on your Mac repeatedly, every day, sometimes multiple times per day. 
your name, your address, your phone number, email signatures, perhaps standard answers to email inquiries. You know better than I do what those things are. With Text Expander, you can type just a few characters and have them expand into whatever you want. Your three letter initials become your full name. Typing three D's in a row becomes today's date in whatever format you choose. Typing three T's becomes the time, again, in whatever format you choose. A few characters become your email signature, complete with phone numbers, your homepage URL, and whatever else you want to include. But what if you're not sure about those things you type repeatedly? Text Expander monitors your keystrokes and suggests words or phrases that would benefit from a Text Expander snippet so you get even more value out of the program, right out of the box. There's so much more to Text Expander than just simple snippets, though. You can use Text Expander to paste blocks of code, chunks of HTML, paragraphs of text, and much, much more. Some of those basic ideas will get you started on the concepts of text expansion, Mac automation, and the many benefits of Text Expander. But don't take my word for it. Go right now to either TextExpander.com or SmileSoftware.com and download a free demo version of Text Expander and see how easy setting up your first snippet is. Once you get used to having text appear with just a few keystrokes, you're going to wonder how you ever did without it. That's Text Expander from Smile, the makers of world-class software at SmileSoftware.com. As always, thanks to Smile for being the longest-running sponsor of Mac Voices. Every time I, I've played with automation, I continue to play with it, and I continue to take little 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 steps forward. But it, it every time I take one, it's like, yeah, I need to do more of this because I know that there are things that are repeatable. And the funny thing is about it for me anyway that that once I once I do something, I suddenly realize that hey, there there are these three other things that I should probably look at automating. So it's it sort of builds on itself. I guess it's you know once you learn how to use a particular tool, you start seeing lots of uses for it, and and not and very legitimate, honest uses that can that can benefit you. Exactly, and and you kind of develop a philosophy of automation of what will save you the most time with the least amount of effort of programming. Where do you get the greatest gain in automating the solution? And I'll admit, um. I got too heavily into automation to the point where when I was making my kids a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I would think about the most efficient way to make that sandwich. <laughs> you know, and so you can think about you can overthink efficiency as well. But when people are first learning AppleScript, a lot of people would tell you to automate a simple task. I don't say that. I say to take on a complex task which will change your life. And if it will change your working life by automating something big, then you will develop the drive to overcome some of the initial hurdles of learning any new language and develop an automated solution. Wow, that's an interesting way to look at it. Do you find that, that folks find that intimidating or do you find that they find it motivating? It depends on the environment that they're, they're working in. If they're a, a, you know, if they're basically a hobbyist, they may not find that as motivating. But I mainly work with corporate clients, and a lot of the people who have come to my trainings in the past work for large corporations. And typically, the first solution that they would develop would save their company over ten thousand dollars. And with that type of incentive they can continue to learn and automate um, through AppleScript. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're, if you're a, a home user or if you want to automate this or that, AppleScript is a great way, especially to start out working with automation. But for companies, um, it can be a powerful tool. And that's one of the things we struggle with in the AppleScript world because companies consider it such a competitive um, uh, secret that I end up signing a lot of NDAs that I will not talk about the solution um, for fear that other companies would take the same approach. And that's something that's always been difficult in the world of automation, um, getting the word out when your client does not want to share the success story. Now, I've had some great clients who've allowed me to, to share some success stories. I, I recently did a work for a, a, a lawyer 
that was very successful that I can share about that. Um, but in other cases, a lot of times we have to keep it to ourselves based upon the agreement signed. And I guess it, 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 in, a, in a very competitive world, that makes perfect sense. I can, I can only imagine your frustration, especially if you come up with a really great solution to solve problem X and they've paid you for it. And so therefore they, they, they own the solution and don't want you talking about it. But that also should be a good indicator to everyone of just how powerful this is and how important it is to mm -hmm. a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that most of us never see. And, and remember, the solutions that I have developed is to work on their street, is to work for their workflow. It may not translate so easily to other environments. But I'll tell you a, a Sal Segoyan story from the earlier days. Um, there, you know, there, Sal was the product manager for AppleScript, and there was a question about whether or not AppleScript itself would make it into OS X. If you remember, a lot of technologies were eliminated when OS X came about. And Sal and I had met a couple of times, and we had corresponded a few times. And I heard those rumors that it may not make it into OS X. And I was working with a very large printing client at that time. And I told the client, can I write your success story and share it with Sal? If Sal promises that it's not shared out of Apple, and they said yes. So I created this little you know, ring binder document showing these shells of IMAX that they had running automated solutions and how many pages they were able to process and all that. Sent it to Sal. And I don't think I'm violating any secrets here, but he was able to take that ring binder to people on various teams in Apple and say, look, look what's being done with AppleScript. We need to keep this in OS X. And that may have just been a small contribution, but AppleScript did make the migration to OS X when many other great technologies did not. But I think it just speaks to the value of the automation language itself. And the fact that when OS X was coming out, I mean, automation was probably a lot more, a lot more the purview of corporate America. At least I, I, that would be – well, that's probably not fair either. But it, it, it definitely did not enjoy the popularity that it does now because now it seems like we have not just AppleScript, but we have all kind of different scripting languages that are so important to so many different things that some of those industries didn't even exist at that point. Exactly, and, and that's very true. In the early days, AppleScript itself was very – popular in the pre-press industry because that was a large segment of Apple's um, user base at that time, and it was a segment right for automation. But even with all the changes that have happened, I still run into a lot of people working in the document or pre-press or layout environment who are not aware of automation options and come to our training and are able to make a huge difference at the companies for which they work. You know, if, if I'm afraid it sounds like we're trying to sell automation too hard here, and that's not the point. The point is that you need to be aware of just what automation can do for you, for your company, but maybe for you on an individual level. And AppleScript is the perfect way to get into it, as we started out by saying, because it's, it's very English language-like. It, it makes a lot of sense. And you just need maybe somebody to guide you in the right direction to, to get up and running. And the, the Down Home Boot Camp, which I just love that name, um, mm -hmm. is probably the place to do it because it, you're going to come in a very uh, a wonderful setting, it looks like, a very affordable setting and have have ac access to a couple of the of the top experts here at, at, with AppleScript. So it just sounds like a win-win-win. That's right. Um, it's great to introduce people to the possibilities of automation and working with AppleScript. And we're really looking forward to a new format in this class. Um, it's called a hybrid format in which much of the class is lecture based. We go over um, many topics to do with AppleScript, but we also stop and pause and give class exercises for people to work on either individually as a, or as a group. And during that time to make sure that people are getting the basic concepts 
Sal and I and possibly others will rotate in the room and help out with some basics of writing scripts, such as learning to write a repeat statement. And you know, you, you need to understand that since I have no programming background, when I first read about a repeat statement, I thought, why do we want to repeat? Because that's what we're trying to avoid is repeating. But then I soon learned that you have to repeat a n through a number of files to process them, through a number of uh, pages to process them. And in AppleScript itself, there are about six or seven different forms of repeat statements. But I teach one. I teach one basic one because it's the most useful and versatile and easy for beginners to grasp. And we might show a second or a third one and a few advanced techniques, but I tend to focus on the techniques which people are going to use the most and give them the great promise of learning additional things. So let's get into some specifics. We, we talked about it being in Carterville. Um, it is October 15 to 17. Um, and and uh, what facility is are you teaching this at? We're staying at a Hilton Garden Inn, um, which is very close to a number of restaurants and, you know, Starbucks and, and things like that, which people want. Um, and we will be teaching there the three days. The first day will be focused on an introduction to AppleScript. We'll cover the basics um, and we'll cover some of the uh, somewhat challenging ideas of working with different classes, which is very important to working with AppleScript. The second day, we will focus on intermediate topics, and that includes um, some more advanced areas of AppleScript. And then the third day, we will focus on how AppleScript works with various applications. So, of course, Sal knows the Apple application so well, and he will be focusing on some things like Keynote and uh, all of the iWorks things from numbers and pages and so forth. And then I will be covering some more of the corporate oriented tools like Microsoft Office. We will look at both Excel and Word um, and we will look at PowerPoint. I'll look at one of the Adobe apps and some other things as well. And a common question from people might be, why should I watch that section when I don't work with that particular application. Well, the AppleScript language is designed to work the same across many applications. So if you, if you learn to, say, make a new slide in Keynote, you might find that the syntax is very similar in PowerPoint, and you understand what is required. So if you watch both presentations, then later on when you go to something like InDesign, you'll realize that making a new page or making a new text frame is very similar to making that new slide. So it reinforces things for people to see working with multiple applications. Now, in the real world, there are differences in these applications. So we will also cover some of those more um, not obvious differences to get people used to working with that specific application and anticipating ways in which they might work with other applications. Got it. So the, I'm really excited about the three-day approach. I'm excited about the exercises. Um, I'm excited to be teaching with you know a, a great mind like Sal Sagoyan, a great teacher and presenter, and uh, very glad to be a co-host of this conference. With the kind of conference you're talking about and the kind of examples you just gave, I would presume that the seating here is a, is a little bit limited, that there's a limited attendance possible. Right. This is not going to be a huge 100, 400-person conference. It's going to be a, more of a smaller group in which we can work together. As I mentioned earlier, we will be uh, providing all meals so we can talk at the meals as well. Um, and we can get to know each other. And at the end of the third day, uh, we are having what's called a script free-for-all, which is an open time when people can show us what they need to automate, and Sal or I or other people in attendance can chip in with ideas or notions of how to approach that automation and get the people started on that path, 
with specific examples. Um, wow, that that's, that would almost be the worth the price of admission right there to be able to, to come in with a couple experts and, and consult with, okay, this is what I've got and, and get, have you, as you say, help, help, have you helped them get started with it? Right. Because we, we've, we've made mistakes on our own. We can help people avoid some mistakes and we can also help them to think creatively about the best approach to that solution. And then also with all the classes, I provide a private mailing list afterwards so people can contact me and other alumni of our courses with questions to help them along in AppleScript. Because our real intent is for people to continue to learn and by, following, by providing a follow-up network of contact, that's the best way to help people to learn. Another great way is to give people as many sample scripts as possible because we all learn from sample scripts to a certain extent. So for each of the programs covered, we will be providing scripts beyond what we can cover in the class time. So you can use that as a sort of a library to look up things and how to automate specific elements within an application. So October 15 to 17, Hilton Garden Inn in Cartersville, Georgia. Um, Ray, if, if someone's interested in coming, um, where would where do they fly into? Atlanta? Fly, fly into Atlanta, which I think is really one of the best airports anywhere. It's a little bit longer drive uh, via rental or Uber or Lyft to get here, but you get beyond the infamous Atlanta traffic um, into the foothills of the mountains, and uh, we're on the northwest side of Atlanta. Perfect. And we, ha we haven't asked the question yet. What kind of price is there for this? Because you've got three days of, of activities and classes. You've got meals, um, all of that. Uh, lodging included, or do you, they make separate arrangements for their own lodging? Separate arrangements for lodging at the, at the hotel. Uh, meals are included. And let's see, our current price is four, three days for $14.99. Um, but I believe that we have an offer for your listeners as well. Great. Okay, which will get them closer to the early bird price um, for registering for the conference itself. Okay. Um, is that something we should share here, or do you want to put it in the show notes, or how do you want to handle it? Uh, let's put it in the show notes. I believe there will be a link provided uh, that we can put in the show notes itself. Perfect. So, folks, macvoices.com, go to the show page uh, to, to see Ray, hear all this again if you want. But most importantly, to find that link that will get you closer to the early bird pricing uh, for the uh, the down home scripting boot camp. And Chuck, I should mention the main website as well. Please. Commanddconf.com. That's C-M-D-D-C-O-N-F.com. Perfect. Ray, it's great to see you. I, this this sounds like an awful lot of fun. I know that because of some work schedules, there's no way I can possibly make it. But boy, I want to. Last year sounded good. This year sounds better, you know, because it's just you and Sal. It's going to be a small uh, situation. It's going to be in Georgia, um, mm -hmm. which means grits, lots of good grits. <laughs> so, <laughs> grits and Apple Script. Yeah, we we are yeah. looking forward to it. We're looking uh, forward to getting to know people who attend and uh, developing friendships that will last for a long time. Yeah. Maybe that's next year's title: Grits and Apple Script. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I have to run that by Sal, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Ray, uh, when you're not teaching the, the down-home scripting boot camp, where can folks find you? They can find me at uh, my website, automatedworkflows.com. And I have another site as well that has the history of my AppleScript teaching, and that is at scriptingmatters.com. And you can reach me at ray at scriptingmatters.com. Any uh, a Twitter presence or anything? Or Yes, I it? have a, a Twitter page. I always have to struggle to rem remember this because I'm not great at Twitter, uh, but Scripts Matter is the Twitter handle. Excellent, excellent. Well, good luck. This sound, I, don't, I know you don't need it because it's going to be a great conference. How could it not be with you and Sal teaching it? Um, but I'll be anxious to hear just how it all works out and uh, see what you, what you two come up with for next year. Great. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's always a pleasure. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. 
if you aren't into AppleScript, you should be. And if you want to get into AppleScript, this sounds like just about the perfect way to do it. Go check it out. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.